Hey, finally got a 3D printer in the workshop. Welcome to Hacka Week. When I was at the Burlington Mini Maker Fair a few weeks ago, I met a guy that was making some PLA extrusion material that's conductive. It's in that video. It's like 0 .009 ohms per centimeter, which is pretty minimal resistance. And uh, that really got me excited about getting a 3D printer. So I picked up one that he recommended. This is from, uh, who is it? HIC Technologies. And this is the 3DP11. And today we're going to get started putting it together. It's about a $420 printer. It comes in pieces and uh, let's open it up and see what's going on inside the box. I put together a uh, little workbench here in one corner of the shop. Got a power outlet there so that should work out pretty good for the 3D printer. See what's inside here. This is my parts list. It's nicely packaged. Um, this is a uh, 3D print removal tool that I picked up. It comes with some PLA. A lot of parts in this are metal, and that was one of the things I read about in some reviews of it on Amazon. Uh, a few people poo pooed a couple of things, but it was those typical people that don't read instructions, get all upset, and then they go post a bad review because they didn't really pay attention to how to build the thing. And then they blame the manufacturer, etc. I got some extra tips, a little bit smaller diameter and also the drills to clean them out with. And uh, the quality of this thing is pretty darn good. Um, everything I saw on videos and in the reviews pretty much sold me on the parts. Um, like I said, lots of metal parts, hardly anything plastic. If it is plastic, it's laser cut or 3D printed and really well done. This is the print bed, it's heated. These are all the uh, rails. Let's take this layer out. Let's set it over here on the other bench. And we've got another layer and in here are more of the smaller parts, stepper motors here, uh, control cables, more cables here. This would be probably the main board, sure looks like it might be. Yeah, that's the main uh, motor driver board, I believe. And we got a USB cable in there. Over here's a few 3D printed parts. A couple of things there that were probably printed on a printer like this. Box of goodies here. This is probably going to be the main controller board and LCD. No, it's power supply. Yeah, power supply. And let's see, put this back. Here we've got the uh, the rods that everything will run back and forth on. And is that it? That's it. That's everything right there. So. First thing we're going to do is take all this out of the box and over here on the bench I'm going to lay everything out, all the parts, check it off on the checklist. We're going to do a little bit of knolling, K-N-O-L-L-I-N-G, which is basically arranging things uh, so that all the parts are all in similar locations. You're arranging parts that are like each other, next to each other. Um, and uh, a lot of people do this when they build stuff. I've done it for years on uh, like furniture you get, like at Kmart used to be furniture that came in the, in the boxes and then along came Walmart. They had the furniture that you put together in the boxes and Ikea has got them. And uh, every time I do one of those pieces of furniture or something like that, first thing I do is lay out all the hardware, put all the like items together, and then it's much easier to check it off your checklist and as you're building you know right where to reach for your parts so let's do that first this first uh pallet of goodies i guess i'll just leave that as is we'll just put that over here actually this would be good to lay the pieces out on this one layer of foam so we'll put this right here where we can lay everything out on it um, Controller board back out. Motor driver board up there. Let's put all the electronic stuff up there. There's the power supply. We've got 
stepper motors. Three of them are just like each other, and then there are two smaller ones. So we're going to put all those together. This is all going to be my row of wiring stuff. Then we get into the hardware and the little pieces. All the plastic 3D printed stuff put in one area. That looks like uh, the device that's going to hold my print head. Yes, indeed, I think that's what that is. Put that right there. Uh, I think that's all the bracketry for the LCD display. Put that in one location. And that empties the box. And there's all the parts. All knolled. And uh, I can take a glance at that now with my parts list, go through it all, make sure I have all the parts. There's all the metal hardware over here, and then it goes over to the stepper motors, electronics, 3D printed parts, wiring, control board, power supply, and down here to the main pile of hardware and cutout parts. Not that many parts. Um, I've been told it's about a 10 hour build on this, 10 to 12 hours, so I figure I can do it in six. <laughs> Just a guess. So I'm going to go ahead and count up all this stuff and make sure that uh, I've got all the hardware and then we'll get started. Okay, things are laid out. Got the bench painted gray. Got the laptop fired up with the uh, instructions on here for the printer in uh, PDF format. Mostly visual stuff, scanning through it there real quick. Uh, a lot of this stuff was written and translated from Chinese, so that should be fun to deal with. Got a little better lighting going on here up above and uh, got the Siamese cat painting above the bench. <laughs> Found that at a yard sale. By the way, that is uh, from Maker Fair 2011, uh, given to us by Jonathan Danforth, the man who headed up Maker Fair 2011. And uh, he gave that to Lisa and I for a wedding present because we met at Maker Fair 2011. And this one is signed by Seth Patrick, the guy who did the actual artwork for that. So that's pretty cool to have that hanging in the shop. All right, let's get started on this 3D printer. Okay, so I've got the PDF open as I mentioned and um, we're gonna get started on the Y axis first and uh, this is exactly what it says. Attention, one, Y axis belt clips clip must be fixed and not allowed to loosen. Two, Y axis belt pulley must be fixed. Belt must be tight enough. Three, make sure the baseboard moves smoothly when power off. Otherwise it will cause Y axis losing step. Oh boy. All right, so uh, my first instruction here is to put together these little corner piece guys. They've got uh, a five millimeter bolt and then an M5 nut that goes in there. So this is the M5 nut, five millimeter bolt. It's a five by eight. That would be from this package. So let's put all those together. So the instructions are asking you to put these through the holes on each one of these, but they tend to just fall right back out. So all I'm gonna do is just get some bolts started in some nuts. And let's see, we've got one, two, three, four, five, six of them times two. So I gotta put together 12 nuts and bolts. Now we're gonna put together the frame here. And this is the frame for the Y axis. So I've got two of the 410 millimeter frames and then I've got two of the 308 millimeter frames. So we're going to start by taking one of these assemblies, nut and bolt. I'm going to shove that onto the end of my Allen wrench, poke it through the hole. have to kind of go at an angle. And I'm going to drop it into the channel and then start to tighten it up. And it'll twist in the channel and lock into place all by itself. 
I can see already that this could be a little frustrating for some people. I'm trying to get this right. All four corners are now joined. Now you want to make sure that these are nice and square. So you just line them up along the edge, make sure everything's nice and flush, and then take the right angle Allen because it's easier to work with at this point. And tighten all these down. Let's just give them an initial torque. Push them down good on a flat surface. Make sure they're flush in both directions, this way and this way. Push on the same surface all the way around to make sure that they're going to be nice and flat. A carpenter's square comes in handy here just to make sure everything is looking good. Now I've got the feet to put on. This requires a M5 by 12 bolt. Push that in there and then a nut. I'm going to drop the nut down into the channel and then we will Get the bolt started into the nut. I'm going to slide it all the way to the end here. We'll put that in each corner. Okay, all four feet in place. Let's flip that over and now we're going to mount the little plastic guys that hold the X axis. I think that's what they do anyway. They're held on with, uh, let's see, some M5 by 12 bolts and nuts. So we've got 12 millimeter bolts and nuts loaded up here. And you can see the direction that they go in. One of them is one way, one of them's the other. See how they are orientated and they're gonna go like so. So that lip right there, that little extra piece goes towards a corner. Now when I tighten these down, I'm going to push down and over toward the corner. Push it to the corner, push down, tighten it up. And we can adjust these a little bit later to make sure that they're parallel with this because a bar is going to run across there and I want it to be parallel with the bed. See how they're set up? They face in that direction on all four corners. Okay, next up, I need two of the 8mm by 410mm polished steel rods, and I need three of the box type linear bearings. Now they're going to go on here with the uh, threaded screw side pointing up. I'm going to put one through the hole on this end, which is a really tight fit, which is a good thing. We'll slide this bearing on there. We're going to get the other one started. Not quite as tight of a fit on that one. We're going to put two bearings on this one. We're going to slide these all the way to the other side and push them through the other mounts until they're just flush with the edge. Now we're going to cap this off to keep that rod in place with one of these little plastic caps. It's the one that's got the hole in it there. And it will go right there. We're going to put an M3 by 20 millimeter bolt in there. And we're going to put an M3 nut on the other end of that. Got a little pair of pliers here to hold the M3 nut. Give that a good snuff. We're going to do that on each end of the rods times four. Now we need to assemble the bearing holder. It's in three pieces. This little piece with the notches cut out and then these two pieces here. These go like so. And if you notice in there, 
is a little notch. That's where a nut is going to go. These require, let's see, two M3 by 16 bolts, which are right there, and then two M3 nuts. Got two of those right here. It's going to do one of these. Let's do these one at a time. I think the easiest way to do this is going to be to just hold my finger on the back side of this, drop the nut in like so, and then run the bolt in there. Get my little Allen wrench on it and give it a spin. Tighten that up. There we go, that's one mounted up. Let's get the other one. Now we can put the bearing in. Pretty much a skateboard bearing. This is a 608Z. I used to run these in my skateboard. Made by NMB bearing. NMB 608Zs. Uh, anyway, let's drop that in. We're going to put an 8 millimeter bolt through there. And then we've got a nut that goes on the other side. And I had read on one of the reviews that someone had a problem with this bearing not spinning that well by the time they tightened all this business down. So let's see, it will be interesting to see what happens here. And you know what, they did not include a six millimeter Allen. So I'm gonna have to go get that from my toolbox. Okay, 14 millimeter wrench on that nut. I got a six millimeter Allen. Just gonna snug it up. Sure enough, the bearing doesn't turn. So that's a bit of a design flaw. There really should have been on this um, a couple of really thin washers on either side of that bearing. So a bit of a design flaw there. There's a couple of ways around that. What we could do is just take this back apart. See if I can find a couple of really, really thin washers that would go on there that would hit against just this part right here, the inner part of the race, the inner race, and pinch against that. Because against that. that's what's going on here, is it's pinching the entire thing a little too much uh, because the way this plastic is soft, a little bit soft anyway, and it's squeezing the bearing. So I'm going to see if I can find washers. If not, the other alternative is to just put it in there and uh, barely tighten it up with a little bit of Loctite on it. Well, the washer thing is a wash, so it's going to be the Loctite method. A little bit of Loctite on there. And the nice thing about that is I can just snug it. The Loctite will set. Just do it with my hand pretty much. That's unfortunate that they missed that one. Well, that spins okay now. So there we go, good enough. Okay, now we're gonna mount this to this side of the frame. Two linear bearings facing away from you, the one in the front. We're gonna use some M5 by 12 millimeter bolts two of the M5 nuts that go in the rails. We'll get those started. And we're going to mount this over on this rail. And according to the instructions, they say that it generally ends up in the middle. Uh, you may be moving it around a little bit during the rest of the assembly. So I guess for right now, we'll just position it roughly in the middle. Next up, we got the motor mount here for, let's see, that would be the uh, X axis. M3, no, M5. I need some M5 by 8 millimeter bolts. Two of those. 
and then we're going to use two of the nuts the usual drill put them through here first get the nuts on and then we're going to mount it to the rail Okay, so it will go on the rail like, like this. Um, let's see, let me see if I can show you a little closer how I'm holding this. See the orientation of it all? The bolts are down at the bottom of that section. That's the way it should look when it goes on the rail. We'll get it in the slots. And according to my little drawing here that I'm going by, the distance between this little plastic mount and the edge of that mount should be 50 millimeters. So let me get out my calipers here and set them to 50 millimeters. It says about 50, so uh, I guess it's not super critical. Now we're going to mount up the uh, stepper motor here and it says to use one of the 40 millimeter deep stepper motors and let's see that's measuring 39.27 close enough that's one of the 40 millimeter ones the plug should face toward the inward part of the frame we're going to mount that up with some m3 by 5 millimeter bolts a ball end allen wrench comes in real handy on this one in the corner to get it started because you can be at an angle away from the actual bolt and let's tighten those up all the way now now we can mount up uh, one of the pulleys here onto the motor so we'll slide that on it says to leave about a three millimeter gap between the motor and the pulley. That looks good. TLAR, that looks about right. We'll tighten both of those set screws down. Now we'll assemble the end stop for the X axis. I've got the micro switches here they come all together I'm just going to strip out one of them and we'll mount one of these up on this assembly and it's going to mount with a little tab that flips on the thing in that orientation right there so if you're looking at it on the side where the belt clamps onto the little tab should set like so. We're going to hold that on there with two M2 by 16 bolts, screws, and a couple of M2 nuts. Some tiny hardware here. Gonna hold the nut on the other side with some tiny pliers here. And then we'll tighten up the screw. Now we'll mount it up to the the plate here. This is the plate that the bed will go on. And it's gonna mount on these center two holes. And it's gonna mount with the switch facing this way when you see eight holes on this side four holes on this side 
so it'll go just like that and it's going to mount up with some M3 by 10 millimeter bolts. The instructions said to use M3 by 10 millimeter um, on the bolts, but I don't have those. Um, all I've got is M3 by 12 millimeter, and I checked on my parts list, and I have two extras of those. So that's what I'm going to use. the nut on the back side while I tighten that one up. And do the same for the other one. I'm going to put all these in and leave them just barely uh, tight. Not even really tightened up a lot. Just bottomed out because I need to make sure everything aligns okay. Uh, by sliding this whole carriage back and forth before I tighten them all down. Now I can already tell I'm going to have to adjust these mounts because I had to push this rail in just a little bit to get the screws to start. And you don't want any kind of uh, tension like that. What you want is just everything to be with no load, nice and neutral, sliding back and forth real easy. So I'll get all these in. I'll go back and loosen up these two mounts. Okay, I'm going to loosen these just a little bit. And then we can allow this to move where it needs to. And just glide across there with no resistance. And indeed it does. Okay, it looks good. Now, let's go back under here. And gonna tighten up that fixture. Okay, that's tight and it's uh, a couple of millimeters away from the end compared to this one, but I guess that could be just because, just because, just because of the way things ended up with the plastic stuff. I'm happy with that. Now let's tighten these the rest of the way. Now we can put the belt on and before we do that we want to make sure that this belt holder is lined up nice with the motor and with the bearing. So first thing we'll do slide this all the way down at this end and uh, I want to get you a close-up shot of what's going on here. So the belt goes in here and locks in place. It's got some teeth in it. This is a 3D printed part and it's going to slide all the way in to where it bottoms out, which is even with the depth of that slot right there. So that's where the belt would be riding. So if I line that up like that with the bearing, I'm pretty close on the bearing right now. I could move it that way just a little bit. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. Let's get the belt back up here and lay it on there. And that's perfect right there. Could go just a tiny bit more. Okay, let's tighten that up. So down here at the motor end, if I line my belt up at the bottom of the slot, where it's going to go in, now you can see that this is off by a pretty fair amount. I need to move it this way a little bit. Okay, I can live with that. I'm going to tighten that up right there.
that's good. All right, get the pulley off. Make sure that this is sitting nice and parallel with everything. And tighten it up. Okay, so we're happy with the alignment on everything. Let's get the pulley back on there. I'm going to take one of these uh, little set screws and just barely snug it so that I can still move the pulley a little. That's just right. Tighten it up. All right, let's get the belt put on. First thing we're going to do is find a wire tie. I'm going to take the belt, put it into the belt holder uh, where it's just flush with the slot on this end and push it in. Use the little flathead screwdriver that came with everything. And then we're going to run this down to the bearing end of everything here. Down on the bearing end, we're going to run the belt through there, thread it through from the bottom up, keep the teeth upright. The teeth should be in contact with the bearing. And we'll head back towards the stepper motor. And we're going to go around the stepper motor and come back up towards the holder. And now we're here at the belt holder. So what we're going to do is just pull it tight and push it into the slot with just a fair amount of tension on and just push it in there where it catches on the teeth and goes in fairly easily and then we're going to bring that up through the slot that's in there. See how that tension is. I'm going to just try for the heck of it going one more tooth which may be too much tension. I don't know. We'll see in a second here. That's kind of that's pretty tight, but it's probably going to stretch a little with time. So I'm going to run with it like that. And now I'm going to push it in there all the way. But to do that, I've got to pull on it like this to take the slack off it. So I can push it down in that slot. Okay, now it's in there all the way. So what I want to do is bring it back on itself. I'm moving the top one out of the way so you can see this. We're going to put it right here and put a wire tie around that. Get it up nice and close to the whole assembly. pull it tight. Take my little pliers here and pull it up good and tight. And I'll cut it loose, take the end off, and then we'll cut off the leftover belt and leave myself just a little bit there. There we go. Okay, let's see where we are so far. Lines up good. Nice. All right, that is nice and smooth. Everything's working good. That takes care of the Y-axis assembly. Well, so far so good. We got the Y-axis complete and things are going together pretty well. Um, other than that one little glitch with the bearing holder, which is not a big deal, took care of that easy enough. Everything seems to be piecing together really nice. Good quality kit for the money. So we're gonna wrap it up there. Next time we'll get to the Z axis and move along from that point. Thanks for watching. Thanks for all the donations. Be sure to like, share, and subscribe, and follow me on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram. And until next time,
next time we'll get to the x-axis, I believe. Yes, the z-axis. Yeah.